Now let's dive a little bit further into the head section and talk about some of the common things that you'll put in this head section here. So we've already talked about one of them and that is the title tag. And again, that defines the title of the document and it's required in all HTML documents. And so that'll show up in the browser tag. It'll show up for the page when it's added to favorites. It'll uh, be the title for the page in search engine results uh, and so forth. So that is the first one. You can see the syntax here. It's an opening and closing title tag and then the, the title that you want for the web page inside of those tags. Another common one that you will see is a link tag. And so this looks like this. It'll be something like link. And then often this is for loading style sheets. So we'll do rel, which means relationship. And we'll say that this is a style sheet because that's what it is. And then you will have href, which is the hyperlink reference. And that will be the link to your style sheet. So we'll just say, for example, style.css. Okay. And so what that's going to do is it's going to tell the browser to load this resource and then that style sheet will be loaded in and that style sheet will be applied to all of the tags that you have here. Now, another thing that you can do instead of loading the style sheet this way, although this isn't recommended, but just in case you run into this, but you, you can certainly do this, which is instead of loading a style sheet, you can actually create a style tag like this and put all of your CSS declarations inside of this style tag. Now, again, that's not, not recommended uh, because then you would, if you had multiple pages, you'd have to copy that from each page into each page. And then if you wanted to make a change, you'd have to go into each page and change that CSS code in every page. And if you had a hundred pages, that would get really cumbersome. And so that's why instead you link it in like this. And now we can go to style, open the style.css, make our change there. And it will be applied to all of the ch pages where this style sheet is loaded in. But that is the link tag. That's another common one that you're going to see in the head section. Another common one or one that you'll definitely see are meta tags. And so there are sort of, there can be a number of different meta tags that you might see. So a common one, one I would sort of recommend that you sort of always include would be uh, char set, which is the character set. So this is going to tell uh, the browser which character set to use and UT. F8 is sort of the most common thing that you're going to see out there. And so that just tells it the there's lots of different character sets out there that can be used. And depending on languages and so forth, you know, the different character sets can make sense. But UTF-8 is sort of the most common one. And so you generally want to put this at the top of all of your web pages. So that's one that you'll see. Another really common one and one that you want to have has to do with responsive design. And in the day and age that we live in, that, of course, is a huge deal. And so this one is going to be, we're going to do meta. And the name of it is going to be viewport. And content is going to be equal to width. And you can really just sort of copy this. And let me go ahead and close this so we don't run out of room here. But the content is going to be width equals, and then it's going to be device width, and then initial scale, and that is going to be equal to 1.0. Okay, and so like I said, this is uh, this is for responsive design, and the viewport tag or the viewport element here. It tells the browser how it should control the page's dimension and the scaling. So the width equals device width part. That sets the width of the page and tells it to set it to the, the screen width of the device. So whatever device is using it, it's saying make the width of the viewport the same as the device. Now, the reason that that is, c comes into play or why that matters is if you've ever been to a website where when you initially viewed it, it was really, really small, and then you could sort of zoom in with your fingers, and then it would zoom in closer and so forth. That would be a web page that does not have this meta tag in it because what the browser is trying to do is it sees that the width of the device is maybe you know, 
640 pixels or 720 pixels or whatever and the width of that's actually in the the web page is maybe 960 or something it's bigger than what the device is so it tries to shrink down the website to fit on the device what this is telling it to do essentially is to not do that okay now the initial scale part sets the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded by the browser and so it's saying it we want it to be 1.0 so we want essentially it to be whatever it actually is so what actually happens as a result of this is if you don't have the the this viewport tag in there then the browser will try to manipulate and shrink and and mess with uh, the size of your web page whereas if you have this in there it's going to render it at the size that is specified by your style sheet and so forth and the reason we need that for responsive design is because we are we are calculating for uh, the different viewports and the different screen sizes in our CSS code. So we don't want the browser messing with it. We want it to just display it as it is, and then we will adjust in our VR CSS and media queries and other stuff that um, we're not necessarily going to talk about now, but we will adjust it. So essentially for responsive design, you want to make sure and have this tag always be in there. That's, that's really important. Now, some other meta tags that you might see that are probably less common here, you might see things like uh, you might have meta and then description like this. Um, name equals description. And then content would be something like this is my first web page. Now, what this is supposed to do is essentially tell the browser, hey, this is the description of this page. So, and, and then when search engines index this page, they might use this description. You can also add a meta tag for keywords, the author, oh, uh, something like, you know, those are different ones that you can add in there. You don't really see those as much because search engines tend to ignore those sorts of things. So I would say the most common sort of your default head tag would be something like this. You'd have your character set to UTF-8, you would have this meta, your viewport set so you can have responsive design, you'd have your title tag and you'd be linking in at a minimum a style sheet, maybe a couple style sheets, maybe a JavaScript file or two as well. But this would be sort of the minimum things that you would have inside of your head tag.